Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to make loose nocetas pants from season 2 episode 6 of The Owl House. The fabrics I chose were a stretch knit, legging type material, and here's how much you need. For the pattern, you're going to grab some of your favorite baggy jeans or sweatpants. This is what you'll be basing your pants off of, so make sure that you like the shape and it fits you well. Lay your base fabric out flat and fold it into quarters. Mine is already folded in half, so I'm just folding it in half again. Next, fold your sweatpants in half and pull the seams until everything is just laying out flat. Then you're going to want to start from three quarters of the way down from the waistband and then cut around the pants. Make sure that the bottom is a little bit more flared because that's how looses are on the show. I'm giving myself five eighths of an inch of a seam allowance, so here we go. This is going to be the bulk of your pants and now it's time to move on to the cuffs. You're going to want to cut twice the length of what you need for your cuffed pants because we're going to fold it in half. This is so that our hemline is a little less obvious and so that the inside of the pants are the same color as the outside. When I make waistbands, I usually just measure the length of two of my thumbs stacked on top of each other because that's around four inches most of the time, so... You're going to want to leave behind some of your gold and teal fabric for the applique that we're going to do later. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you can use some iron-on vinyl or some paint to put on the details. I do though, so I made my own embroidery files. These will be available on my Etsy, link in the description. They're just simple appliques with a cutting line and a border line. I did this for the diamonds and the eyes at the bottom of the cuffs, which I'm going to be doing out of gold. Using my extra large embroidery hoop as a template, I cut out my stabilizer. I did the same thing out of my teal fabric. So these squares are a little bit larger than 5 by 13 inches. So here's me layering the bottom part of my dark blue leg pieces on top of stabilizer. I did this all without using temporary fabric adhesive just because I find that you don't really need it most of the time. Make sure that you are using the right side of the fabric. The way that I usually determine this is by stretching it and seeing which side it curls into. Whatever side it curls into is the wrong side. So then I just put the fabric on top and secure it with the top of the hoop. Make sure everything is snug and you are ready to go. Now I start with the cutting line files first. This should be the red part of the embroidery file. Um, you don't actually have to use red thread. It's any color thread, it's just red so you can tell the difference. So this just stitches your fabric together using the basic shapes of the diamonds that you're gonna use. I use some scissors to cut around the border of the stitches so you can get rid of the fabric that you don't need. Cut as close to the stitches as you possibly can because trust me, the fabric will spill out where you don't want it to. This process is very similar to patch making where you cut off the top layer of fabric and then continue embroidering the border on some stabilizer, except this time we're just doing it on two pieces of fabric. The next steps are just to embroider using the second part of the files, which is the teal part. And this will just embroider a border over the diamond so that you can't tell that there's raw fabric sitting on the edges. Now, if you don't have an embroidery machine and you're feeling a little adventurous and you didn't want to use paint or iron on vinyl, you can do this part by hand or by regular sewing machine. Just sew on the shape of a diamond in the best way that you can, and that's it. You can also put through the edges of your machine using a, a very close zigzag stitch. It should give a similar effect. Repeat this process for the eyes, but this time I did use adhesive spray because this fabric was really strange to use. Here's what all your pattern pieces look like laid out. Hopefully, if you're not like me, you remember to flip the diamonds on one of the pant legs. Now I'm gonna briefly go over how to sew these pieces together. You're gonna start with your crotch seams. Take two of your pant leg panels and line up the crotch seams and just sew those together. Then you're gonna take your remaining pant panels and do the exact same thing to these. Take right sides together and sew together the crotch seams. These should both look like two flat little pants. What you're gonna do after that is take the two panels and then sew them right sides together so that they make the final pants. Next thing you're gonna do is lay out your cuff pieces. Um, make sure you sew these into a tube. I'll better explain this in a little bit, but here's just a little top view of how you're supposed to sew it together. This is also right sides together, but for visualization purposes, I did not show it that way. After it is a tube, you don't actually unfold it, but you're gonna fold it in half, and then that part is going to sew onto the pants on top of the ears, which will be on the pants. All right, now it's time to take everything and sew it all together. I started with sewing the ear pieces. I just made these so that they can flip inside out and the seams are hidden. 
you're gonna want to make four of these little things and those will go on top of your pant cuffs but to make the pant cuffs we're gonna go over it again a little bit more detailed this time so lay out your fabric right sides together uh, you're gonna sew together the longest parts of each side so here's a little time lapse of me doing that and then you have yourselves a tube shove your arm through it to make sure that the ends are still open and this is just what it looks like when you fold it in half however you will have to unfold it in the next second anyway now it's time for the main pant legs we're going to start again crotch seam first and sew those together on both parts of your pants And once you're done with that, your two panels should now be one, and it should look like a pair of pants. Do this again with the remaining two panels, and then lay them on top of each other, right sides together. This should be the part where you decide which part of the pants should be your front part. It doesn't really matter because the pattern pieces are all the same. And then just lay your ears on those parts, and then sew them onto it. Once you're done with that part, all you have to do is sew onto the side seams and then the final inseam. Once you're done with that, you should be able to wear the pants. For the cuffs, take your arm and shove it through the tube eyes first, and then take your arm and grab the pant leg and pull it through. You should now be able to line up the seams and the ears with the correct sides. This is so that the ears are facing the eyes and that the seams are together. They should fit perfectly. Here's me showing you the seams of my project, and you're just gonna sew around that little circle. I went ahead and did this off camera. Uh, you should just flip it inside out, and this is what it should look like. Now pull them to be inside out again, and fold the cuff in half. Fold the top over about a quarter of an inch, and pin it around so that the top of the fold is on the seam that you just sewed. Fold and pin your cuff along the seam straight around. Make sure that it hides all of the former seams. So here's a time lapse of me sewing the cuff onto my pants with a quarter inch seam allowance, removing the pins as I go along. Make sure that you do this or else your sewing machine will break. For the waistband, your gold fabric should be the same length as the top of your pants and your elastic for the inside should be a little bit smaller than your waist measurement. It's a little lazy, so I just kind of folded it over on both sides and then sewed along the waistband all the way around. I also attached some of these little floppy pieces because that's what it looks like in the show and it's not exactly a tie. Leave your waistband open an inch or two and then thread some elastic through the tube. Safely pin the two ends together and try it on making sure that it's the right size. Sew your elastic together with a zigzag stitch and then sew the rest of your waistband closed and then you should be done. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe and also check out my Etsy store because I'll be selling some of these pants on there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!